I've got three easy ways to help you get started with mass stations by the end of the week or in less than five days. If you are a middle school math teacher, keep watching because I got you. Let's talk about how to get started with mass stations without it being one big dumpster fire of chaos. If you are new around here, my name is Kathy Martin and I help sixth, seventh, eighth grade and algebra one math teachers experience more aha math moments in the classroom and save time and money with their math lesson plans and resource. So how in the heck do we get started? Okay, let's dive in. Question number one, how do you want to structure your classroom day with stations? Now, this is really going to depend on whether, like how much, how much time you have in the classroom, right? Some generally we either have 45 minutes, give or take, or 90 minutes, give or take. I have a full video um, where I dive a lot deeper into how to structure math stations given a 45 minute or 90 minute classroom that I will link below in the show notes. But basically you have to decide if you have 45 minute classroom, do you want to do stations a couple days a week? Do you want to do stations every day? That will depend on how many minutes your stations should be. If you have 90 minute classes, that's amazing. Um, and that gives you more flexibility. But again, you have to decide how many days do you want to do stations? And then how long do you want those stations to be? Personally, if you're wondering, well, what do you do? I run stations Tuesdays and Thursdays. Monday and Wednesdays are teaching days for me where I do direct instruction. We talk about new concepts, yada, yada. Tuesdays and Thursdays are um, station days. And I've had classroom schedules where I had 45 minute classes and 90 minute classes, and I've done stations regardless. So with 45 minute stations, I will usually do 10, 15 minutes in the morning where we do a warm up. We, you know, do our, um, uh, like classroom, just kind of get things together. Um, and then we do 20 minute stations two 20 minute stations. And I do that on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Fridays, sometimes it's a station, but most of the time it's like catch up, catch up day, um, tests, things like that. Okay. So you have to decide how you want to structure your classroom. Number two, you have to how to you have to think about how you want to configure your actual classroom, the physical space. For me in my classroom, students have individual desks, and then I have a couple of longer six foot tables. I have two of those in my classroom, so I will sit at one of the six foot tables with my own station where I work with students. I will have the other six foot table. Um, obviously for students with chairs around it. So that's one station. And then the kids, I've trained the kids to just maneuver their tables, even though they're single tables, to maneuver like in a circle, in a group. And that is where kids will rotate. It has taken practice. It does take time. But now that they know what to do, it's seamless. And number three, how do we get started? You have to figure out what you want your stations activities to be. It does not have to be difficult. And I highly encourage you to use what you already have. Some of my favorite activities are task cards. I love task cards because they're easily differentiable. If that's a word, I can use it in a station. I can use it as homework. I can use it as classwork. And all of my task cards come with 15 task cards, but I don't have to use all 15. And that's the beauty of using the task cards. I love using uh, coloring pages because I can just have the activity, my box of crayons right there, and it's done. Like there's no other materials that I need. Um, I love utilizing Chromebooks. I do not have a full classroom set of Chromebooks in my classroom. We are now at a point where in education and in school, most kids have Chromebooks just given distance learning and everything. But my personal classroom, I've never had a whole set. Don't get me started. <laughs> but I have like a, you know, I have some. And so being able to, it's perfect for stations because I don't have to worry about every kid not having one, right? Because I have enough. Um, so utilizing that, 
Um, if you don't have any of those things, make your own task cards, like use um, index cards, write your own, use the textbook, um, use online platforms that already exist so you're not creating anything. Use what you have, okay? So let's recap. Figure out how you wanna actually structure the schedule of your stations. So how many minutes do you want to spend in stations? How many times a week do you wanna spend in stations? Those are probably the big two questions. And number two, figure out how to actually configure the physical space in your classroom. And number three, figure out what you want your stations activities to be. Check out the next video where I will share everything that you need to organize your math stations. But if you can't wait, join us for our next free training where I'm going to show you everything that you need to make stations easy to get started, realistic for your teaching life so that you can get started right away. And you'll be able to walk away with a certificate for one hour of attendance. Click the link below to sign up today. See you at our training and see you in our next video. Bye for now.